everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, it's gonna be a little bit different than the ones I typically do. We're gonna be going to a couple different job sites. The first one is to run six CAT6 cables. It will be four for printers and two for cameras. We'll also be taking out a UDMSE and putting in the Pro Maxes to do high availability. The second job site, we run some cabling and we also install one access door. At this job site, we did install 11 doors in total and there will be a full video on that. And lastly, we'll take a look at some of the access settings. So let's get right to it. All right, so I'll show you the cable run right here. We have a loop going on both ways. As I'm running this by myself, it's a pretty long cable. It goes from where these boxes are in the network rooms that way. Uh, and then I'll show you where it's actually going to land. This is for printers and it's also for two cameras. So we also have another loop here and it's attached to the string and then we'll be going down this way. This is where the strings cut off, but that's not the final location. Now, as we turn this corner, there's going to be uh, two printers here. So we need two jacks there. And then there's going to be two printers on this side. There will be a camera in this stairwell as well. And also over the receptacles for an AI360. Okay, we got our printer cables down the wall right now and we need to get them terminated. What I use is the vertical cable VMAX jacks and we also use the, uh, it's either the eye punch or the one punch crimper. Um, it just makes it so much easier instead of terminating each conductor by itself. Uh, once we're doing that, we are using decor straps and then we have this faceplate. So let's get it terminated. Next up, we need to change out this UDM SE and we're gonna be putting two UDM Pro Maxes in here. The reason we're doing that is for high availability. Looking below, this is where we're gonna put the second UDM Pro Max. And then if we keep going down, we have this little gap between. So originally when we were doing this build out, this whole rack was for the network gear. But as you can see, there is a ton of audio and video stuff. So we need to work with them. They need everything under this last patch panel. So we need to move this gear up as we have to put one more switch in. So I'm gonna take this UDM SE out and then put the other ones in and then we're gonna put them in high availability. Now we have both of our UDM Pro Maxes plugged in and this one I restored from backups so our network is up and running. We need to now get these in to our shadow mode high availability. Uh, you can currently see that we are syncing. So the first step is to plug into port one of our primary and then port nine of our secondary, sync them together. Afterwards, we need to plug into port seven of both of these consoles, and then we need to do the cabling the exact same. So we're gonna be going out to our WAN, and then we'll be doing a DAC cable down to our aggregation switch, the exact same as this primary console. Now we've started the automatic failover, we need to plug in both port seven, and this cabling will just be temporary, but I'll go from seven of the primary down to seven of the secondary. Now the next step, we could unplug this port one that is going down to our port 9 but this port 9 needs to plug into our WAN so I'm going to plug it down into the modem and the last step for us is to plug in our DAC cable that is going down to our aggregation switch and then the uh, failover the automatic failover will work perfectly fine.
Now for the Unify Axis installation, we put Axis on our UMBR and there's a reason for that. The reason we put it on our UMBR is because we could pair our cameras to our readers. We only put three G2 Reader Pros at this site, which those have cameras, but the other ones are just using the standard G2 readers without cameras. So now we could link whatever we want to that and I'll show you. We'll go into our Axis controller. Right on the dashboard of Axis, we could see all of our Axis readers or our door locations. We could see that this one door is unlocked all the time. That's because we have it on a schedule to be unlocked from 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. We could also do this as the first person in. The door will stay locked and the first person who swipes in who's able to go through that door, then the door will be left open during those hours. Now let's go ahead and pair a camera with one of our readers. So we're gonna go over to the left hand pane to our devices. The reader that we're gonna have paired with one of the Unify Protect cameras is the hallway entrance. We're gonna click on it and then we could see paired with the hallway entrance. I'm gonna go and click on that link. From there, we could do manage paired devices and I'm gonna click on that once again. Now we can see the list of all of our cameras that are in this Unify Protect and we want to select the hallway camera. I'm going to click on that and then we'll press save. Now that is paired with this reader. Now that's going to be it for this video, which is a little bit different than what I usually do. Like I said, there's going to be a lot more on-site videos, especially for Unify Access. We have a job coming up for 30 doors and another job coming up for 44 doors. We'll show you all the cabling, the electric strike cut-ins, as well as the configuration in Unify Access itself. So if you're not subscribed here, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.